Hey, Bowtie Nation, as part of our series to bring you different perspectives and ideas on investing, I wanted to share a video from Thomas Carver on how to use technical analysis when picking your stocks. He's going to share a technical analysis 101 and explain some great ways to use charting in your investments. I'll leave a link to another great video of his in the description below, so make sure you check that out. Thanks, Joseph. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about technical analysis. Technical analysis 101, what is it, how do you do it, and how we can get started looking at some stock charts and doing our own technical analysis right away. So real quick, the actual formal definition here of technical analysis is financial analysis that uses patterns in market data to identify trends and make predictions. So what we want to do ultimately, we want to predict the next move in a stock, right? If we can predict where a stock is going to go, that's going to help allow us to maximize our profits, whether it's a trade or whether it's an investment. Now, for the average folks and for most people out there, the best way to go about investing your money into the market, into any given stock, is to just continue to buy that stock every day, every week, every month, every year, whatever your plan is and whatever your budget allows. Now, obviously, if you can buy the stocks that you believe are undervalued on days where they're down a lot, that's better than just buying it on a set day every single month. But generally, long-term investors want a dollar cost average in and continue to build up that investment, whether it's a dividend stock, whether it's an index fund, whatever it is that you can keep reaping the rewards of compound interest over time. Okay, cool. So why use technical analysis? Well, it can actually really, really be to your benefit, especially if you're really trying to reap the rewards of compound growth and maximize the returns you see on investments. Not to mention those who are looking to get into more active trading, technical analysis is a really good tool to have on your side. But here's what we don't want. We don't want technical analysis to be confusing. We don't want crazy indicators. We don't want lines all over our chart so we can't see anything. We want it to be simple and we want it to be helpful to us. Everyone's ultimately going to have their own threshold of what works best for them. But at the end of the day, most people are going to find that simplicity is key. So in terms of starting out, what we need to understand is support and we need to understand resistance. Those are the two pieces of technical analysis that I think are the most important that you must understand. And throughout the video towards the end, make sure you stick around because we're going to be going into things like volume, the RSI, and some other indicators. So understanding support and resistance. Now, what is support? Well, in simple terms, support is essentially a level that a stock has come down to but doesn't want to go below. So, for example, let's say we're talking about Apple stock, and Apple stock is trading just over $100, and Apple stock comes down to $100, then it goes back up, then it comes down to 101 then it comes back down to maybe 99 What we can generally do here is say, okay, that $100 level or so is where Apple seems to be balancing off and it doesn't want to go below that level. The buyers always seem to step in and take the stock back to the upside, so that $100 level is a support level. Now, trading is an art, it's not an exact science, so could Apple drop below 100 briefly? and then bounce right back up and we can still call that hundred dollars support it's not the easiest because we're trying to be technical here but as long as you understand that trading is an art it's not an exact science you'll be much much better prepared for apple to drop below 100 bucks just a little bit and then recover and still hold that hundred dollar support now speaking of this support what's the recent example we're going to dive into the computer here and take a look at this we're using the webull platform you can use any platform you would like we're actually going to be talking about Neo right here. In this example, we're seeing that Neo, we have this line drawn in right here. We can draw these lines in up here on the drawings tab and go over to the trend line, go to horizontal line, and that's how we can get these lines to come in. But what are we seeing as this line? This line's at $35. We're seeing that Neo doesn't want to go below $35 in recent weeks. And yeah, we can see some of these little wicks to the downside. So it tries to go below, but it quickly reclaims and bounces back to the upside. So that's telling us, hey, Neo has some support here at $35. Now, what is resistance? Now, it's quite the opposite. It's a level a stock doesn't want to go above. For example, a stock like Tesla may come up to a certain point, get up to that level, and then bounce back to the downside, get back up to that same level, and then bounce back down. A perfect example of that right here is shown in the recent weeks. We can see Tesla, for example, as it came back down from hitting its highs up around $900, the past couple of weeks, Tesla has come down quite a bit. But as of late, Tesla has bounced up and hit about $720 or so. And guess what it's done? It's gone up there a couple times, a couple different days, because each of these candles we're looking at here is one day, and it's bounced back off that level. So it's showing us, hey, for whatever reason, the sellers are in control here at that $720 level on Tesla, and Tesla just does not want to pop the upside. Now, of course, when you're watching this video, these numbers are going to change as Tesla could be somewhere else and Neo could be somewhere else. But we're seeing as of right now, these are the support levels and the resistance levels that we're looking at on these two stocks. Now, how do we know that these levels are actually significant? 
Now, what you want to be able to see is multiple times that a stock gets to a level and then bounces off that level or bounces up. So as a support level, we want to see a bounce to the upside like we just saw in Neo's example. And then for Tesla here, you want to see Tesla coming up to this line multiple times, so multiple days in a row. Or if you're looking on a shorter time frame, multiple times on the one minute chart, multiple times on the one hour chart. Whatever time frame you're using, the same ideas apply. And I like to use two plus times. If I see a stock getting rejected at a resistance level or finding support at a level two times or more, for me, that's telling me that's a support level. Now that's great in terms of horizontal support resistance. Also one thing to note here is that a previous area of support becomes new resistance and vice versa. So for example, Tesla here in this case, if Tesla gets above that 720 and Tesla starts pushing to the upside, maybe it hits 750 and then Tesla comes back down you would expect that 720, that was a previous area of resistance to become new support. Now, a couple other things we wanna talk about before we wrap things up so you can get in here and get out with what you need. Wanna talk about trend line support. So in terms of drawing trend lines, you don't have to just draw a horizontal line. You can actually draw lines that have different slopes. And what I like to do for trend lines is finding trend line support. So if I can connect three candles, three instances where a stock doesn't drop below this line, but we have a trend and it's not just a horizontal line, that's a valid trend line in my eyes. And so for example, right here, we're looking at ticker symbol SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. And what we can see is that we have now these three bottoms of these candles that we can connect. And that's showing us that we have higher lows. We have an uptrend as we like to call it, but that's our support. So if SPY comes back to the downside, I would suspect that if I continue this trend line off to the right, I would suspect, or I would look for as of right now, that $375 level on SPY to become support if it does come back down towards that level. And the same thing applies on the resistance side. So if I'm looking for resistance, I'm looking for the tops of candles. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna draw an uptrending resistance on SPY. And what can I do? I can connect a lot of candles just like that. And we can see we have these higher highs continuing to come in, but they keep getting rejected on this trend line. So SPY gets up to this point and then pulls back. So as of right now, if SPY heads on to the upside, I would suspect at the pace we're going at up around that 410 to 415 level, SPY may have a nice little pullback because it would probably be hitting up towards the top of that trend line, which over the past couple of weeks and months, that has been acting as resistance. Now, there's a lot we can get into in addition in terms of technical analysis, and that's something for another video, but there's three other things we wanna talk about. That is volume, then there's gonna be some indicators. So we're gonna talk about volume. So look at these volume bars at the bottom of our page. Every broker is going to have this. What you wanna be looking for is increasing volume bars or decreasing volume bars. And what is that telling us? Well, we can see that volume precedes price. That's a known fact. So if we know that volume precedes price and we see the volume is really coming in and the price just is not moving, well, we can suspect potentially a move to the upside in a certain stock. So if we take a look at what's been happening with SPY as of late, we saw the volume bars on the 24th, 25th, and 26th start to be increasing. At that point, we started to see a reversal out of a downtrend and SPY started pushing up to the upside in the past couple of days, we've been hitting all time highs. And so that was an example of volume preceding the price action to hit all time highs. Volume starts building up, volume starts coming in, and then next couple of days, we hit all time highs. Now, if we saw volume fading off and the market hitting all time highs, that potentially could give us less conviction on that potential trade. That's telling us that there's less people in the market, there's less confidence in the market to be going up. So maybe you'd be looking for a pullback to the downside and vice versa in different examples. The next technical indicator we're gonna talk about here is the MACD. The reason why we have the MACD pulled up on here on the bottom of the screen is because it's going to help indicate trend changes. So what we can utilize for the MACD is we can utilize these red and green candles on the bottom or the lines, whatever works best for you. What we can see is that when you see the lines crossing over or we see the candles going from red, getting smaller and smaller, going back to green, that's indicating a trend change. That's indicating a potential reversal out of a recent downtrend or reversal out of a recent uptrend. And so you can kind of start to see kind of more of a wave-like feature of how stocks start to flow over time. It's a very, very good indicator indicating a trend change. And so you wanna be looking for when the candles start to peak out. So when the candles are peaking out in terms of the size of the red candles on the MACD or the size of the green candles, and they start to shrink down, they start to get smaller and smaller and smaller, that's indicating that we may be having a move and a reversal to the other direction 
upcoming in the market or on that stock very, very soon. And then last but not least is the RSI, the Relative Strength Index. We want to talk about this because under a 30 RSI is considered oversold and over a 70 RSI is considered overbought. And so what is that going to tell us? If we're looking at the RSI and we see the RSI for a given stock or for the S&P 500 going to oversold territory under 30, that's telling us we could be setting up in the near term for a reversal back to the upside because things are oversold, they are likely to reverse soon. And the same thing with the upside. If things are overbought, that's telling us, hey, we may be paying a premium, things may have risen too fast, we can anticipate a pullback at some point in the near future. So those are some indicators that are very, very helpful. Now, this is the basics in terms of what we're talking about here in technical analysis, but hopefully it was a very helpful video. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments section down below, like always. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there was one other video to talk about or to mention here, that could be the next kind of piece of the puzzle outside of technical analysis, it would be understanding the different types of candlestick patterns. So if you're curious on how those types of candlestick patterns work, we'll leave a link down below to a candlesticks 101 video where we go over basic candles, we go over hollow candles, and then we go over Heikinashi candles to hopefully give you guys a better understanding of what these candles mean and how you can use them to your advantage to help paint a better picture of what may happen in the stock market or a given stock. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like on the video down below and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video.